Hi, everybody. It's Michael here with Brian and Colleen from the Howard Elliott Collection, joining me from Illinois. How are you guys? Doing great. Okay. Well, how are things in Illinois right now? Colleen, I'll let you talk. You're in the epicenter of Chicago. I am. I am in the middle of the city. Um, things are interesting. I wish that more people were listening to the lockdown like they were supposed to, but you get a good day of weather in Chicago and everybody's outside running and playing and having picnics and that kind of thing. Um, but I think that we're starting to see, I was out earlier today, we're starting to see more of the social distancing and the mask use and good. all of that. So hopefully it's, so hopefully we're going to flatten the curve a bit here. They actually shut down the lakeshore, right? Everything. So I live right across the street from the Lincoln Park Zoo and Lincoln Park. And the zoo is shut down. All of the lakefront paths are shut down. Basically every park, playground, grassy area in the city is closed. Oh. Scary time. Uh, and just not being together in High Point is one thing. But with things going on in major cities like that, it, it's scary. And we're lucky that we're all okay. You mentioned masks, um, and obviously this has been covered in the trade publications. Um, a lot of brands have pivoted to making masks. How do you guys? So tell me, Colleen, how does Brian go from Pitbull attorney uh, to seamstress making masks? I, I have to tell you that at the point in time that he called me and said, so can you sew, he had already had me shut down or uh, stuck at home for a week and a half and not allowed to go into the office. And then said, well, I think we can make masks and show me yours because I had just been at the doctor a few days earlier. And uh, lo and behold, you know, it, have machines will sew. And uh, we've got a full production running right now of masks in various colors and varieties and fabrics. So we've shifted a little bit. That's incredible. I joke, obviously, but what you guys did and how quickly you did it in, in pivoting to, to support the efforts around uh, masks was, was awesome. So thank you for doing that. Um, and secondarily, you're, you're open. You're, you're serving the, the, the trade, but you're also keeping people employed. And I think right now it's something we've been talking a lot about on these chats, um, about what that means to people. So tell me what went into that, Brian, in, in deciding that you could um, continue your operation and keep people working right now. Well, part and parcel to the mass production, number one, you know, waking up in uh, a sweat in a in, in nightmares uh, those first few, that first week of figuring out how do I stay in business? How do I create this new word essential business? Um, and how do we stay alive? You know, the truth be told, I, I went online in the middle of the night and tried to figure out what materials go into a surgical mask and found out, lo and behold, that our uh, casings that we use for our pillows and ottomans and the non-woven materials are exactly what's used in a surgical mask. Huh. So that was starting of how do we use the materials we had on hand. We also have elastics. We do a lot of slip covers. And with our sewing team and our sewing man manager coming up with some prototypes pretty quickly, uh, it really helped us become nimble. And that first weekend of trying to donate uh, masks was, was kind of difficult and very bureaucratic. Um, but the goal has always been is how do we stay open? How do we keep people working? This was long before the PPP, uh, SBA loans came about and we still haven't been funded on that. Um, so keeping people, uh, working, uh, and making sure that we had that essential status so that we could stay open mm -hmm. and have some skeleton crews in a social distancing way to do some of these drop ship orders uh, and, and stay alive with some of the e-commerce. It's incredible. Kudos to you guys. Um, and you have always been in your core business so designer friendly with no minimums and the ability for folks to do business with you easily. How has that um, impacted what you're seeing right now from the design community? I mean, being so easy and being open for business um, how has that worked with you, Colleen, with your local distributors, your, your channels that you work with and, and the design community? Uh, we're still seeing really consistent design community, design trade orders, inquiries. Um, I personally approve all of the requests for access to our website, and I'm seeing a lot of designers. Um, 
and and a lot of special orders are still coming through stagers all of those kinds of things are still happening um and and we really we shifted to target our our marketing and our weekly e-blasts to specific groups of people so that for the design community it does say hey we know your projects may be on hold right now but if they're not we can ship directly to the location or we can ship to your your receiver and so we're we're promoting that drop shipping a little more as well right. um and also letting people know that we can still process their orders but hold them so that they're still in the queue right that's incredible i mean it's so important right now i can't tell you as i did mention to you the other day how many designers are contacting us asking who's open for business who can fulfill my orders um, life is going on in the design business right now uh, so it's, i'm so glad to hear that you are able to do that now we're not together at high point this week drinking pepper infused vodka if i remember correctly from your showroom um, you're right i am see um, tell me what we would have seen. What's new at Howard Elliott? What, what would we have seen uh, in your showroom, this market? Well, we're, we've worked very diligently to continue our design evolution. And uh, you would have seen, and you still will see, because we've digitized everything that you would have seen. And you'll be able to see it on our website in our new introduction booklet uh, that I believe will be available on Steelyard as well. Um, but what you would see is a, a, a continuation of some of the trends that we had begun to uh, really push into during the fall. And with our mirrors, we had a combination of more minimalistic framing with some exquisite finishes, but a little bit more mirror, a little less frame, a little more depth to the frames. And where we did have some width and uh, size to the framing on the mirrors. We added some really interesting uh, finishes. We've added a slate veneer, an actual slate stone veneer to uh, a tabletop and a mirror for a tabletop being the console um, with some really pretty silver metal uh, finishes to complement them. Um, more some more industrial looks um our ceramics uh for this market had had more of that organic free-flowing shapes to them with really pretty finishes that sometimes would have uh dual finishes and inside would be different color than the outside some grays with blues um some lighter colors with some textural elements to them um, tried to vary some of the sizes. We all know that the designers are still looking for oversized accessories, so we didn't want to disappoint. Um, but we still have some great pieces that could fit into anywhere in the home. Um, and we added several pieces of accent furniture to our, uh, our collection, this, this market. And that's probably the most disappointing thing for me, not being able to showcase it in person but I think our team did a splendid job uh, of creating that, those digital environmental shots where you're really gonna get to see the size and scale of all the products mixed in. But what I'm most proud of is that we were able to complement our materials. Sometimes Howard Elliott gets deemed as being, in the past, being too, looking to, to, to one lifestyle setting. And I really feel that this time around, we cater to all the lifestyle settings. And there's some beautiful solid wood uh, tables that were introduced this market, uh, or this cycle we'll call it. And I'm really, really excited to see the feedback, uh, adding some console tables of solid wood, uh, a dining table of solid wood, and some end tables that complement it with a little bit more of a uh, coastal slash, I don't wanna say rustic, but kind of, more traditional feel than contemporary. Okay. And Colleen, do you have a favorite piece that you are going to get, you were going to introduce at market? I think, and actually the pieces that were featured today on High Point at Home that I just noticed, there's a set of vases there that I think are really cool because they mix finishes. So there's a smoother finish at the bottom that kind of looks marbled and then a rough kind of more sandpapery finish towards the top and the neck of the vase. And I think that where we're, 
mixing those finishes and kind of mixing materials together. I'm really excited about those pieces. Um, I think we're the, the evolution of product in just partnering the new and the old together has been really cool. Um, Jody and Brian have both done a really great job of making sure that, that all the collections are cohesive. That's fantastic. Well, everybody can see it on High Point at Home um, with your digital catalog. And my only request before we end is if we can add a video of Brian sewing to High Point at Home. Um, if we can actually get that, that would really round things out. But and as, <laughs> as much as I'd love to oblige, I'm not sure I even know how to turn the sewing machine on. Well, next time. We'll see you all in October. We'll raise a, a glass of pepper-infused vodka to everything that you're rolling out, everything we're excited to see. Thanks for all you're doing, for your employees, uh, for your business, and for the design community. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank Michael. You. Thanks, Cecilia.